what are some of the nutrients and you know vitamin and mineral and you know the big the big P question that we get every day, the protein question. Like, what are some of the things that we have to think about when we go into a plant-based nutrition from a dietary um, wholeness uh, perspective? And we'll go back this way. The protein question. Um, there's actually a little bit of a calculation that you can do. You basically take your weight um, in pounds. Divide it by 2.2 to find your weight in kilograms, and multiply that by 0.8 or 1.8 to find how many grams of protein you're supposed to get. And it's 0.8 versus 1.8, depending on whether you're a marathon runner, whether you're sedentary, whatever. So um, for me, it ends up being like 45 grams of protein that I need for my weight, size, gender, whatever. Um, and I have this nutrition chart called Lose It that helps me track my nutrients. Um, and I just check in a couple times a year with that. And just this week, my average protein intake is 80 grams. So that's like almost twice what I need without really even trying. So it's, it's, it's not hard at all. The protein issue is a myth, but I will pass it on to you because you are um, a health expert. Um, when people ask me about protein, I say, well, think about the largest land animal you can conjure in your brain. Let's say an elephant or a hippo or a giraffe. Where do they get their protein? They eat a lot of leaves. They eat a lot of greens. Usually works for humans, too. But again, everybody's different, so you might be in a different life stage. You may need to focus more on your protein intake. But I think B12 is something that everybody needs to be concerned about, whether you're vegan, vegetarian, or an omnivore. B12 is actually created by microorganisms. And we used to get it by eating kind of dirty food because we would get some dirt, we'd get those microorganisms. Cobalt is kind of involved in the creation of B12 in our food. And we have really depleted farm soil now. And we don't get the kind of nutrition from our foods that we used to. And our food is super clean. It's ultra pasteurized. There's nothing on there that the farmer and the supermarkets don't want on there. And maybe we need a little bit of dirt, I'm not sure. But if you are vegan, vegetarian, you probably need to supplement with B12. In addition to looking at B12, I think we need to look at food. We need to look at color. I used to live in the central Missouri Ozarks, and the first time I went to a supermarket there, the checkout person saw all my gorgeous fruits and vegetables. She stopped the belt and said, I've had this job for 15 years and I've never seen such pretty groceries. So we need pretty groceries. When you eat food that is beautiful, that is alive, that has that life force energy that the yogis call prana, the martial artists call chi, then that life is going to enliven you. You're gonna go through your life with more energy, less illness, and you're gonna approach the decades of oh my gosh 50, oh my gosh 60, and it's going to be a breeze. When you eat genetically engineered Roundup ready crops, those are nutrient deficient because Roundup chelates the nutrients, tying them up so they're unavailable for the plants and for the humans. In fact, we get extra levels of, of glyphosate or Roundup's active ingredient when we eat these genetically modified crops, which can chelate or tie up the nutrients within us. To avoid GMOs, four tips. Buy organic, not allowed to use GMOs. Buy products that say non-GMO, and the best label is non-GMO project verified. Buy products listed on our shopping guide, available for free at the bookstore. Or avoid the at-risk ingredients. There are nine GM food crops. Soy, corn, cottonseed oil, canola oil, sugar from sugar beets, Hawaiian papaya, a little zucchini and crookneck squash, as well as alfalfa, which is used as animal hay. So you may not need that in this, in this audience. Oh, wow, how interesting. Well, again, I bring the restaurant perspective. I think one of the challenges is, and as Marissa pointed out, scientifically, if you eat a good vegetarian, vegan diet across the board, you get everything you need, whether it's coming from your greens or your beans or whatever. Are you doing it for the animals? Are you doing it for health reasons? Are you doing it because it's so hot right now and popular or you want to have better skin? Really get interested, really start, you know, finding things that you like instead of finding something that you just oh, somebody said I should have this protein shake and I don't like it, it tastes gross. You know, find something that you're interested in, find what vegetables you love the most, start experimenting, go to the restaurant all the time, because it's awesome. <laughs> and um, uh, we had in Dr. Frank Lippman to my studio, he, he gives these talks there to the 
to the young yoga teachers that are doing the training program. And when he said, you know, I'm, I'm kind of here to scare you guys a little bit because I can tell you what to eat and what not to eat, but it's your job to to keep up on the research, to find out what, what you like to do. Because if you're inspired, you're going to inspire other people. If you're just doing it because you think you should be healthy and eat broccoli, if you hate broccoli but love kale, you know, find out all the cool things you can do with kale.